Joining us now, U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra. Mr. Secretary, thank you. It's good to see you again. So Great to see you. How, how soon will these tests be available to consumers? Well, we've got numerous tests already on the market. What we're trying to do is bring an even bigger number, and especially the over-the-counter uh, over tests, which people really like because they can get quick results at home. And so we're trying to make those more available. And so we're working with manufacturers. We're also trying to streamline our, our regulatory process to get as many products on the market over-the-counter as possible. But, uh, I mean, the question is, how will these, how soon will these be available at your local ph pharmacy, and what will the average cost be? So we believe that by the end of the year, we will have some, uh, we will have essentially quadrupled the number of available tests over the counter. We're going from a point a few months ago where there weren't very many available over the counter. You could still get a test, but it had to go to a lab, which took time to get results, to getting them now over the counter where you get results very quickly at home really ramping that up by the end of the year. But with the work that we're doing now, we think that by next year, we'll really be able to meet all the demand that will be out there some point next year. Well, you, when you say quadruple, but quadruple what? You know, can you give us some numbers as to availability? Yeah, I, I don't want to give, I don't want to quote wrong numbers, but remember what happened was, Andrea, in, in the summertime, there, the testing that was going on was really being done by labs. We were employers or public uh, health organizations were taking tests from folks, getting lab results. Today, because of the, the re work requirements that you be vaccinated before you go into work, everyone wants tests rapidly. So we had to really ramp up the number of tests that people could do at home. That has taken some time because most of the kits were not for over the, overnight, over-the-counter uh, use. Getting that up requires manufacturers to scale up. We're trying to help with the money that we're spending. We're trying to help manufacturers scale up. We're also trying to make sure that the tests that they may have that aren't over the counter, see if they can transition to become over the counter. Quick results. And uh, we're talking about trying to do this in months or by next year. But will these also be caught up in the supply chain mess you know, the backup, are they produced overseas? Do they have to be shipped? You know, what can you tell us about real availability in real time? And give us some sense of the numbers? That's what consumers yeah, the, want to know. The numbers are in the millions. And so ramping up into the millions is where we're heading. And we already have enough tests to test everyone who needs one. The difficulty is they're not the type of tests that most people want. They don't want to wait the several days it takes to get the results back from a lab. They want the instantaneous results that they can get at home. That's what's ramping up. That's what we're helping manufacturers be able to pivot towards. And so the millions that it's going to take, tens of millions, if you can think about it, the constant testing that has to occur, that's what we're trying to help scale up. But if someone were to ask me, is there a test available for me today? There absolutely is. It's just not at the uh, local pharmacy or convenience store that you can get it right now as available as you'd like. And we're trying to ratchet down the price so people don't have to pay 15 bucks for a test. We're trying to get that down into single digits quickly. Single digits for these kinds of tests. We know how important they are and how much, how often they're required. Um, should people who are vaccinated be tested as well because some people Absol are asymptomatic? Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to make sure that we're protecting each other and getting vaccinated is job one. But that doesn't mean the work is done. You, you still have to make sure you're safe and your family is safe. And so the testing is absolutely required, especially, for example, if uh, workplaces are now going to be requiring uh, employees to be vaccinated. If healthcare workers want to not only maintain the safety of their patients, but their own safety and their colleagues' safety, testing is absolutely required. And Mr. Secretary, I want to ask you about mandating vaccinations because that's happened in New York City and we're seeing protests now today in Brooklyn, city workers, uh, perhaps including police and fire because their unions are opposing it, opposing the mandate. The commissioners are in favor, but you've got a big protest right now as we speak. You can see it on our screens in New York City of workers in Brooklyn against the New York City mandate. We know that mandates work. But let's talk about the equity and about the labor opposition to it uh, from Joe Biden, who says he's a labor president. 
Andrew, we have to be safe. Uh, I saw uh, Mayor de Blasio last week, and uh, I will tell you that the city is going to do it. The city doesn't want to go back. New York City doesn't want to go back to what it experienced a year, two years ago when it had essentially shut down. It really affected everyone. You need to be safe. It's not just vaccination. It's making sure you're testing, you're doing the hygiene. And right now, uh, requiring workers to be vaccinated is something you're seeing at the public, by the public sector and the private sector. We need to get out of this pandemic, and everyone has to be part of that. We, if you want to do stuff in public, if you want to do stuff with others, you got to be part of the team. And part of the team means you have to be safe and let others be safe around you. You can't just be selfish. And that's your message to union workers in New York, in Chicago, including frontline fire and police workers. Uh, responsibility. Police personal res Andrew, it's, a, it's personal responsibility. You have to take personal responsibility to make sure you're safe, but that those who are around you will be safe. Uh, how else do we get out of this pandemic? And it's not brain science. Uh, it's, uh, it's just simple uh, review of the evidence. We've seen how we can save lives. We know what it takes to prevent people from getting so ill they have to go to the hospital. We know what it looks like if we don't do those things. Let's be safe. Let's be responsible. Let's protect each other. Oh, Health and Human Services Secretary uh, Javier Becerra, thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. Thanks for helping thank us you. today.